Folks, tonight I'm here to answer a question from a subscriber, and at first I thought this was going to be just this awesome question I wanted to answer, and then it's kind of, kind of, I guess, haunted me over the last few days. I'm going to go ahead and read what this guy sent to me. Uh, it's a guy named Jos Josiah, and Josiah says, uh, I've been trying to get into blues for the longest time. Trying to get a blues guitar on my budget is hard. Any pointers? So... Josiah, I at first thought, oh man, I'll just give him all kinds of, of great advice here as to what kind of blues guitar maybe would be the best for the money. So I'm sitting here with a very expensive acoustic guitar. This is a, a, a Martin D28. I, I, the reason I'm, I had trouble with this, I started thinking, well, what kind of blues maybe is Josiah into? Or what good advice could I give to anyone who wanted to start out and wanted a really good guitar for playing blues? And um, so I, I will tell you this, I started out playing blues on acoustic and I, I didn't start out on a guitar like this. I started out on one called an Aria Pro 2, which I thought sounded really great for back in the day. It was about a $300 guitar back when I bought it in the 80s. Um, there are now literally hundreds of different guitar options for inexpensive guitars that I think sound pretty good and authentic. What you get with an old guitar like this, this is a 1971, is, is you just get sort of a, a richness of the the quality of the wood after it's aged a little while. It just starts to sound a little more soulful. I, mean, I just like I like the way the Martin sound. If you can find an older guitar and get a really good deal on it, uh, a, a guitar that plays well, um, then you might look at like an, an Alvarez or an old Fender or a Washburn type uh, acoustic, or maybe an Ibanez even from, a, a, like I said, I think for blues, the, the ones that you buy straight out of the store, even some of the more expensive ones, they're just a little too sparkly and a little, the wood's just a little too new. So I think for acoustics, uh, like I have an old Guild D50 from uh, 1965. So it's still made out of Brazilian rosewood. And for acoustics in particular, I think the wood matters. And I think that them having aged, so maybe acoustics not the way you're wanting to go at all. But if you go get a new one, there's a there's a company called Art and Luthery A and L guitars that I like a whole lot. Um, there are just any number of them. And, and the big advice I'll give you on any of these guitars is go somewhere and play them, uh, read some reviews about them. You know, find a guitar store where you can sit down and you can play and feel what feels comfortable in your hands. Know a few guitar riffs when you go in so that you can play them at different places. Know at least, uh, if, if you've not been into blues before and you don't know your pentatonic scales, know a few pentatonic runs. You know. Uh, know a few little riffs and you can just find any, any of them, some of my videos if you like, or just go find some what you call stereotypical or classic blues riffs and be ready to go into the store and play those at different places on the neck and see how those guitars feel for you. I'm going to get a different guitar out, so I think you're probably talking about electric blues based on if you've been watching some of my videos. All right, so now I have a Fender Telecaster. This is an American one, but I've got to say a lot of the really good ones that you can buy now are, uh, you know, are very cheap. You can get the Mexican ones, which sound really great. You can get uh, Telecasters that have more than two pickups in it. The standard Telecaster, though, the kind of sound that you get with it, a lot of people have played blues with this, and I've got on the screen here some famous names. Jeff Beck, Roy Buchanan, of course, James Burton, this is a guy played with Elvis, Albert Collins, Steve Cropper, who's like, you know, R&B, and all, played all kinds of stuff. That's played definitely some blues. Jerry Donahue, guitar great, if you've not looked up Jerry Donahue. Danny Gatton, maybe one of the greatest guitar players ever. A guy named Ted Green, who actually was sort of a... Um, of a jazz player more than anything, but I think Ted also is very bluesy and cool and he's jamming too. Muddy Waters played a Telecaster. And Jimmy Page, a lot of people don't know, played that whole first Led Zeppelin album on a uh, Telecaster. It's all very blues-based stuff. One of the things I guess I would say is, is look at your influences. You know, who do you want to sound like? Or do you want to sound like your own your own person. You want to start your own blues sort of revolution. But I would say that the Telecaster sounds nice. I mean, here it is in the, in the uh, treble position. And uh, you got a lot of twang there. In between, you got this kind of thing. So you've got sort of a, I guess sort of a funky kind of. A 
I mean, I like it. I always have kind of liked a Telecaster. And I played a lot. I played in an R&B band. I played a lot of blues. Uh, I particularly like the front pickup for a Telecaster for a really good lead, clean sound. <laughs> I'm playing clean and the reason I'm playing clean tonight instead of some distorted sounds you can with you boosting the gain on almost any decent amp now you can make any guitar sound really great overdriven the thing you'll run into maybe with some some problems with the uh, telecasters that don't have noiseless pickups um, and you probably want the ones that don't <laughs> is that you'll end up getting some feedback you'll end up getting a little bit of amp noise and everything so there are some drawbacks at very high volumes or unless you just really like that sound but i always have dug uh, what i like the most about the telecaster when i played a lot of telecaster is that it plays very comfortable to me it's one of those guitars that albert lee is a guy that i like a whole lot he played a lot of country but he can play some blues and rock and stuff and albert said that the telecaster just seemed to hang right on him and that's what i've always thought about too i've just always been very comfortable playing telly so for years this was this was the kind of guitar i played and you can find good telecaster options for around 250 to 400 bucks and again you just got to go out and play them so let's move on to my next kind of favorite blues guitar i'm kind of going in backward order from my not my least favorite but these are guitars i all like but i'm going to my very favorite at the very end so you'll get to see what that is okay so now i've got a little guitar that's going to ruffle some feathers this is a little uh like 200 dollars les paul copy which i think would be a good choice for anyone starting out who's on a budget this is by oscar schmidt company it's the oe20 i did a very thorough review of this back uh, gee, about a year or so ago maybe more than that year and a half or so ago when i first bought this guitar it looks just like a gold top les paul i've never changed the strings on it so these strings are over a year and a half old and so how does it sound <laughs> You know, I mean, pretty decent, I think. So that's the treble pickup. I'll go into the middle so you can see kind of what you get there. And then the front pickup or the, the uh, you know, the, the neck pickup, so sort of like this. Go watch my whole review on this guitar if you want to look this up see but for an economy les paul type guitar i think this is a really good choice of course if you can get one of the epiphones they're going to be 150 to 200 300 dollars more they play really good they feel more like a les paul this guitar maybe if i had one criticism of it it's the neck's not quite as wide as a real les paul neck uh you know, if you can afford to go over $500, there are a number of really great options for Les Paul type guitars. What do I like about these? I like the fact that when you uh, distort any uh, humbucker type pickup, which is like this, not single coil, you get a really smooth, cool, distorted sound. So if you like that really screamy kind of kind of a Les Paul sound, then I'll, I'll give you some ideas of, of, of who people who are real famous for that. Like Jimmy Page, of course, in the later Led Zeppelin years, he played... Led, uh, Les Paul type guitars pretty much exclusively. Dwayne Allman played Les Paul. Eric Clapton in the early days when he was with Cream and all played Les Paul. He also played some SG. A lot of people don't know that Eric was a Gibson guy before he became a Strat guy. Uh, Joe Perry with Ar Aerosmith. Massive blues licks and stuff like that he plays down. Gary Moore is probably my favorite blues player on a Les Paul. But I tell you who's coming up pretty close next to that is Joe Bonamassa. I like Joe a lot. And just go listen to anything that Joe's playing. Now Joe's playing four or five thousand dollar Les Pauls, but you can you can find in an but in a budget range. I would say, I, I would say that this is probably the best cheap model here. Or, but I would say that probably in the Epiphone or there are a number of people that make Les Paul type copies that you can get a good one for three hundred and fifty bucks that would probably suffice for many years as you go through blues. I mean, it's a whole lot of it is just how you play not so much what you play the instrument that is although the instrument does lend a vibe you know it, it puts you in the right i'll say this i play differently when i play a les paul than i do when i play a telecaster than i do when i play a strat than i do when i play an es type guitar it's just something about it that is different every single time it, each guitar inspires me to do something a little bit different Peter Green was a really great uh, Les Paul player, and I also mentioned Billy Gibbons of, of uh, ZZ Top. I'll also say that, you know, Gary Rosington of uh, Leonard Skinner, 
was a, is a really famous uh, Gary Richrath from uh, Aria Speedwagon. You think of these guys as rockers, Southern Rock Boogie, uh, but they play a lot of bluesy type licks. And so a great screaming kind of sound, or it can be very subtle. So, I, you know, I have this thing right now. I have it in a, a I think they sound good, clean. I just kind of like the bell-like tone of some of the single coil pickups a little bit better when played clean. So I'm not uh, I'm not a super big when I when I want to scream I go for a Les Paul type guitar. When I uh, when I want to be smooth I go a different route. I'm getting ready to show you that my next step up in what I personally like. This is the uh, an Ibanez AS73. So. I'll make no um, mystery about it. I love the sound of an ES-335. I've never been able to afford one. Matter of fact, I've only maybe played one once or twice. They're hard to find in the guitar stores. Um, the typical ones that I go around to, Guitar Center and all, you just don't see them very often. Uh, but I would love, I guess if I had my favorite guitar of all time that I would like to have, would be a Gibson ES-335. Someday I hope I can afford one to buy one. Uh, until that time, I buy these cheaper models of what the ES guitar is, the electric Spanish. So this is not really a hollow body guitar. It is a um, it is a guitar that has a piece of wood that runs all the way through, but it has these these little uh, air chambers down the side, which typically seems to give you a little bit more of a of an airy type tone, and a, a little more mellow sound than what you get with the uh, Les Paul. Now. You can put different kinds of pickups and guitars and get them to sound certain ways, better ways, different ways. Uh, I have all, that's the front pickup on this guitar. There's just something about the tone of that kind of guitar that I've always dug. I've just always kind of liked that smooth sound. And probably the guy that got me liking it the most, or two people, probably Larry Carlton is a guy who's played, he's a studio musician, but played with uh, Steely Dan and all, and, all. Uh, and probably also Robin Ford. Now, Robin plays a hollow body Fender a lot of times, but he'll play an ES-335. Uh, let me tell you some other people that have played them, so you just, you know, well, Clapton. Here's the interesting. Clapton used to play a lot of Gibsons, and, and uh, may, maybe six or seven years ago, he did a concert, and I can't remember which concert it was, but he did a concert where he played a lot of ES-335, and I thought he played the best on that guitar I've ever seen him play. And he's, I think I've seen him play in Strats for years, and so he's a phenomenal Strat player. Uh, but Eric is, uh, in that video, showed me, in that concert video, showed me, man, he, he hits a whole new level when he plays this kind of guitar. I'll tell you another person that would influence me to play this kind. He's not a blues player at all. Far from it. It's Alex Lifeson. Uh, I always liked the tones. That It wasn't so much uh, the playing style. In, in Alex's uh, uh, instance, it was it was the sound. The sound that came out of those guitars. I went and saw a Rush concert. and it seemed like he could coax some really screaming, awesome sounds out of them. Or some very subtle, beautiful kinds of sounds out of them. So... Uh, you know, how does it sound on, on a treble type pickup? By the way, you can go watch a video where I've done a, a review of this one. Knocked it a little bit out of tune. I was a play, little play, playing there a while ago. favorite kinds of guitars and let's move on to my very favorite so I wanted to say about that uh, Ibanez that I was playing that you can get that one for like 400 bucks 399 excellent guitar you can get one another one by Oscar Schmidt that does it just doesn't have quite the access to the higher uh, notes that you might get I think it's called a Delta King and maybe it's OE 30 but there's another guitar, like two, usually 225 bucks, something like that, hollow body. If you like that sound, that sounds really nice. Uh, I've done a, a, I don't know if I've done a review of the OE30 or not. I've definitely done some playing on it though, so you can look on my channel and you can hear what one sounds like. They sound great uh, and play just great. Um, very comfortable to play. So those are some e economical versions of that type of guitar. If you want to get one, Ibanez does I think make some really great. Uh, semi hollow body guitars of that ES type. So now this brings up my favorite kind of guitar to play blues on, and that would be this, the Stratocaster. And no big secret, a lot of people prefer Strats. Now this is not a, a super cheap one. This is called Deluxe Player Strat. 
One of the reasons I, li I always like Strats is, uh, and this one does have noiseless pickups on it. So this one's about a $600 guitar. Uh, you can get really good Strats for 250 bucks. Let me say this. If you go to um, Squire is the is the Stratocaster or the Fender model that's sort of the lower end model. And uh, I think the Squire guitars are great. Just don't go for the lowest low ones, the ones that are like 175 bucks and all. I don't think the tuners and all are very great on them. I don't think they play very often. They feel very good in my hands. Uh, to get a really good Strat, you're going to go, you know, pretty good. It's, you're going to go up to about the $250 level. But you can get nice ones, nice Telecasters, nice Stratocasters. Um, and, and if you're willing to go up to, say, $300, you can even get in a Telecaster 3 pickups, like I mentioned earlier which will allow you to do a lot of things you do with a Strat. But one of the things I always liked about it is you had a five-way selector. So you go from, when you distort this bottom pickup, this back one back here, it's a really body, crunchy kind of cool sound. Uh, but still, it's very uh, twangy or, you know. I, I, it, for me, it's Americana rock sound. I mean, so, you know, the, some of the most famous players uh, of, of blues have been Stratocaster players, so I'm going to go real quickly through some of them. Randy Bachman's m mostly known for rock, but he's one of my favorites. It's kind of like alphabetical order. Jeff Beck, big-time Strat player. Richie Blackmore, whoa. You can play all kinds of music, any kind of music, but great blues that Richie could slap out on one of these. Eric Clapton, Ry Cooter, uh, Rory Gallagher, Robert Cray. I mean, this goes on. It's, the Hendrix played the Strat. My number one, I guess, guitar hero that influenced me in the way I play is Martin Knopfler. So Martin Knopfler from the Dire Straits uh, played a Strat. Uh, John Mayer does now. Bonnie Raitt, big Strat player. Kenny Wayne Shepherd, Robin Trower, Stevie Ray Vaughan, for heaven's sake. Ronnie Wood from the Rolling Stones. I could have picked 50 other people that play blues on a on a Strat, and for me, this, it's just a matter of all the different kind of funky tones. I've just gone into the in-between here. Totally changes the character just to go between those two little. So I'll go into the middle pickup. And the in-between, between this these two pickups sounds, uh, Clapton likes this sound a lot. The, uh, the front pickup a lot. That is just a blues sound to me. Um, so I like the versatility of it. I like the fact that it sounds good finger picked. If you want to finger pick, I think it's uh, one of the best sounding guitars when you play rhythm. I mean, I think I think if, when you're backing up other people, you can back into some of these other little in between tones. One of the things I really like about this guitar is you've also got this button you can push on it, and it's going to give you the two outside pickups. you even even more versatility it's like a little coil tap switch and uh you know like i say being a, a big Knopfler fan i always just kind of like that that uh what would you call it? Sort of like a Spanish type of a blues sound that he'll do. To me, it was it was just a really cool kind of sound that Mark would get when he played. So I guess the number one thing I would say in closing is whatever guitar you're into, whatever kind of sound you like, um, probably if you get into blues and you stay with it long enough, you're going to end up with three or four different kinds of guitars. Each one will inspire you to do something a little bit different. Be sure you don't go out and just pick a guitar based on my uh, advice, though. Go out and listen to them, play them, hook them into, I would say hook them into an amp that you can afford uh, at a guitar store. Go And, and I, would, I typically, I still play a lot of solid state amps. I don't even own a tube amp. I, I hate to admit that. I do have a lot of tube preamps and things, so if I want to get a tube sound, I'll record it into my computer or into uh, software through a tube type preamp foot pedal type deal 
Uh, but when I go out and play live, I've always played with just effects, whatever effects pedal I like, and uh, and sometimes just the amp and the guitar if I like the way the guitar sounds. And so you can use it on most of your amps. You got some gain. I will say tonight I've been playing through a little Fender a Mustang one. It looks like this tiny little amp. Uh, would I highly recommend that for a, for the learner? I would because there's all kinds of tones you can get with it, and it's cheap. It's like a cheap 130 bucks. So great little guitar amp. It's very loud too if you want to play out, but you're probably end up go going to end up wanting a larger, better amp at some point. Definitely play the guitar. See how it feels in your hands. I will say this: it's one of those things. The right guitar will find you in a way. You'll go out and you'll play it in the store. And, and you'll play three or four different ones, and you'll say, I don't know, I'm kind of torn between it. But eventually, your hands will tell you which one is the one you want to go with. So that's my best advice. Um, Stratocasters, like I say, you can find them cheap. Any of these guitars, you can find types of these guitars that will give you the same sort of satisfaction as you would by playing the more expensive American prototypes. One guitar I didn't mention, should have brought it up, is the uh, Gibson SG. And... I don't want to leave the SGA out because a lot of people like Derek Trucks plays it again, Gary Rosington, I've mentioned. Angus Young from ACDC has played some of the most crunchy, awesome sounds. Um, G. Dwayne Allman played, and yet, so a lot of people that play slide like to, they prefer the access that they get with a, uh, a Gibson SG. And you can find Gibson SG models that are much uh, less expensive. Actually, again, the Oscar Schmidt Company makes a great little SG copy that you can get for like $179.89 bucks. A great guitar probably to learn on. So, um, you know, I, w I don't want to don't want to diss the people that like the SG. I just don't personally own one. They always felt to me too much like a like they were just like just barely there. There wasn't quite enough wood there to make me feel like I had something substantial in my hands. To me, they were like they ought to be the oar of a of a boat. But they sure do play nice and they do sound great. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna not knock anybody that plays the SG. Uh, some of them sound fantastic. Uh, so maybe at some point in my life I'll own one. But for me, I like the Tellys, I like the semi hollow bodies, I like Les Pauls, and I like Strats. And so uh, find yourself something in that, in one of those models that you really like. Maybe there's a person, like I say, that's influenced you. Maybe there's a vibe. Maybe there's just a feel it is when you get in your hand. Maybe when you plug into that amp and you hear that tone, then you'll know that that's the, the guitar you want to, to be on your blues journey with. I know this this video is probably going to throw out a lot of controversy. There's going to be a lot of people giving their input, and I welcome that. Throw out any comments you want to as to what you would recommend as uh, for blues, for as a really great electric blues guitar. Again, thanks for watching, folks. Subscribe to the channel if you like.